Hello friends, let's begin a new chapter on superconductors and supercapacitors. Well, this is futuristic topic. We have been developing technologies to upgrade from semiconductors to now superconductors and supercapacitors. <music> Let's first talk about electric current. As you all know, these are just the prerequisites. Electric current is defined as the rate of flow of charge. Basically, it is nothing but as the rate at which your charge flows. As you can see here, we have positive charges and negative charges. Well, of course, the positive charge and negative charge will have opposite direction of flow and hence the current is defined as the rate of flow of either the positive charge or the negative charge. Well, we will be coming this across various derivations in wherein we have to take electrons as the carriers and holes as the carriers. As you can see, the positive charges are going from the positive side to the negative side, the ones shown in red. The negative charges are going from negative side to the positive side, ones shown in blue. So, how will you compute the current? The current would be positive in one case and negative in one case. Well, that's the reason we here mention just charge, not electrons, neither electrons nor positive charge. Now here as you can see, this is the positive terminal of the battery and this is the negative terminal of the battery. Now the negative terminal of the battery acts as a source of electrons, therefore electrons are originating from the negative side, the ones shown in blue and going towards the positive side. This is the direction of the flow of electrons. And if you take a reverse direction, that would have been the direction of the flow of positive particles if in case they were present. So this direction is called as conventional current. So basically conventional current is the direction of the current which is opposite to the direction of the flow of electrons. As you can see, the blue color is the direction of the flow of electron. This is conventional current. When an electric field is applied across a solid, it accelerates the electrons in the direction of the electric field. As electrons moving through a solid undergo repeated collisions with the atoms in the solid and therefore move with a steady velocity known as drift velocity or Vd. Now, this drift velocity is nothing but as the velocity which is the average of all the collisions and all the drifting which an electron happens to take care while crossing the cross-sectional area. So basically you can say this is the electron. It goes under many collisions from here, from here to here and then of course here. So if you add all the velocities and take the average out of it, you will get Vd that will be called as the drift velocity. The drift velocity is proportional to the electric field applied of course. Stronger the electric field faster the electron would be drifting and hence we say the drift velocity is proportional to the electric field. Mathematically, Vd directly proportional to E, therefore Vd is equals to mu into E. This mu is what is a constant. It's constant of proportionality and mu is called as mobility. So here you are talking about electrons, so therefore it becomes mobility of electrons represented as mu e and if we would be talking about mobility of holes, it would become mu h or mu p. Now, electron mobility as we discussed earlier is defined as the drift velocity of the electrons per unit electric field. This is the formula for mu. It's drift velocity per unit electric field or Vd by E. Mobility can also be given by sigma upon n into E where n is the number of electrons per meter cube or we can also call them as electron density. So these are the two formulas for mobility. We'll be using them in solving the numericals and derivations. Let's see what is the relation of mobility with the electric current. Well, this is very simple. Just pay attention. 
I is equals to Q by T. This is nothing but as rate of flow of charge with respect to time. So it becomes N into E because there would be N electrons each having a charge E moving with time E. N into E now becomes equals to sigma upon mu as from the mobility second equation and hence I is equals to sigma upon mu into T. This is the relation which is between the mobility and the electric current. So it becomes I is equals to sigma upon mu into T. Well, you can make a note that I and mu are inversely proportional assuming sigma and T remains constant. Thank you.